Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be going over how to handle errors and exceptions in Python by learning how these try accept blocks work. Now, these try accept blocks can be confusing to people who aren't familiar with them because they can actually have a lot of different sections, like we have this try, accept, else, and finally. So let's take a look at exactly what's going on here and how we can use these. Now a lot of the time we're just going to use these first two try and accept. So for now I'm going to go ahead and comment out this else and finally. So first of all, why would we even need a try and accept block in the first place? Um, well, let's run some code that throws an error and it might give us a uh, better idea of why we need this. So I'm going to try to open up a file here. If we look in the current folder that I'm in, we have this test underscore file dot txt. Let's try to open that up and let's accidentally leave off the underscore. So if I do test file dot txt without the underscore. Now, if I run this, you can see that we get this long traceback error here. Now this is useful for us as developers because it gives us a lot of useful information. We have this line number here and file not found error and exactly what happened. But uh, if we get an error like this, we wouldn't want something like this to be displayed to the people who are using our software. So if we can anticipate uh, sections of our code that uh, might throw an error or an exception, then we can use these try and accept blocks to handle them in the way that we want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the code that threw the error into this uh, try section here. And within this accept block, I'm just going to print an error and an exclamation point. Actually, let me make this a little bit more detailed. I'm going to say, uh, sorry, this file does not exist. So now if I run this code, uh, you can see that we receive our custom error instead of the uh, that uh, longer, more verbose error that Python gave us before. So what exactly is going on here? So what's going on is that within our try block, we're going to try to run some code, and this throws an exception right here. So then, if it throws an exception, then we go to our accept, and then it's going to print out this line here. Now this exception here is kind of vague. Um, now if you remember when we ran this code outside of the try accept block, we got a file not found error. And we actually want to be as specific as possible when we catch our, catch our exceptions because the goal of the try accepts isn't to just get around all of the exceptions and errors that we could, re could run into. Uh, it's meant to catch the errors that we expect and handle them properly. So this general exception here, it's not only going to uh, catch file not found errors, it's also going to catch a lot of other different problems that we could run into. Um, so for example here, if I was to make this the correct file name and then uh, a line underneath here, let's just make a bad assignment. So I'll say var equals bad var. And if I run this, you can see that we get the exact same thing. It hits this exception and then it says, sorry, this file does not exist. Uh, let me fix this little typo here. So what happened here is within our try block, uh, this code actually ran successfully. And this is what threw the exception, but that's not clear right now because this is too general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a uh, catch a file, file not found error. So now if I save and run this, now you can see that we get the regular Python traceback, which is a good thing. So what happened here is it came in and it opened up this file, and that was the error that we were trying to catch. And then this was an unexpected exception here. And uh, you can see here that it is a name error, and we're only catching file not found errors. So it didn't get caught and it didn't execute this um, code here and instead it just printed out the default Python traceback. Now if we do want to catch more general exceptions then we can actually add another except um, below this and so if I say um, accept an exception and then within here I'm just going to print uh, let's see I'll just print sorry something went wrong. Now, if you do handle multiple exceptions like this, uh, be sure that you are putting the more specific exceptions at the top and the more general ones uh, the further that you go down. Because if I was to put this general exception here at the top, then it's always going to hit that one first and it'll never get to the file not found error. 
Now currently we're printing out some custom messages here, but if I wanted uh, to just print out the exception that it threw, then I can just do as, and you can name this whatever, I'm just gonna say as E, then I can print out E, and I can also do this for the file not found error too. So I'll do as E, and instead of this custom message, I will print out E, and if I run that, you can see that it comes down to this exception here, and instead of printing out a custom message, it prints out the exception that we hit, which is the bad far is not defined. So if I just get rid of this line of code and then run that, then it runs successfully. If I give this a bad file name and run that, you can see that it says error number two, no such file, a directory, uh, and then the file name. Okay, so that's a quick look at the try accept blocks. Now what's the deal with the else and finally blocks down here? Um, so first let's start out with the else and we'll uncomment this. Now what the else does is it runs code uh, that needs to be executed if the try clause doesn't raise an exception. So, uh, so for example here, let's say that this didn't run an exception here. So I'm gonna make this the correct file name. And now I'm just going to print out the contents here, and then I'm also going to close the file. So I'll do an f.close. So if I run this, our try isn't going to throw an exception because we have the correct file name here. And then since it doesn't throw an exception, it's going to execute the code that's within the else clause. So it prints out the contents of the file and then it closes the file. And if I open up this file here, you can see that it just says test file contents, and that's exactly what got printed out down here. Now you might wonder why we just didn't put this in our try block. So we could move this up here and just execute this underneath. And if it throws an exception, then uh, hopefully it's one that we'll catch anyway. Now you could do that, but like I was saying earlier that we wanna be specific about what it is that we're actually trying to catch here. Uh, so if I move this code up here, then, um, then it may throw an exception and we may catch that exception, but it may be something that we weren't trying to catch and it may just be an accident. So it's better to just go ahead and put that in the else clause or to uh, just put it after the uh, try block altogether. Okay, so now we come to our finally clause. Um, so like I was saying, the else clause only runs if we don't throw an exception, but the finally runs no matter what happens, whether the code is successful or whether we throw an exception. So this is useful for making sure that you release certain resources regardless of what happened in the try accept. Uh, so for example, say you are working with a database or something like that, uh, then this would be an area where you could close down the database at this step. So I'm just gonna put in a print statement here and I'm just gonna say that I am executing the finally. So you can see if I run this, then it runs our else clause and then it also executes our finally. And now if uh, within our try, if I make something that's going to throw an exception and then I run this, you can see that it throws our exception, but it also still executes our finally. So again, that's a way that you can um, make sure that you properly close down certain things. So like, you know, uh, closing down a database or something like that, something that needs to be done regardless if the code is successful or not. Okay, so we're just about done, but the last thing that I wanted uh, you to know about exceptions is that you can actually raise exceptions on your own if you need to do that. So it doesn't have to be something that Python would have caught on its own. Um, so for example here, uh, I have this corrupt file.txt. So if I open up this corrupt underscore file.txt, now there's nothing actually wrong with this file, but I'm just kind of using it for this example. Um, so I want to raise my own exception here. So I'm gonna say if f.name is equal to, and I'm gonna say corrupt file.txt. So I'll copy that and paste it in there. Now, uh, now I'm going to raise an exception manually. So to do that, it's as easy as saying raise and then the exception that you wanna raise. So I'll just raise this general exception here. So if I save that, and if I run that, so it tried to print this exception, but it just doesn't have any details here. So I'll just put in an error with an exclamation point. So if I run that again, you can see that this line did raise this exception. So then it went down to where uh, this accept line where we were handling that exception and it printed out the error. So this allows us to manually raise exceptions. So if 
I was to comment out that line and run the code, now you can see that it did uh, the correct thing that it would have done normally. So it opened up the file and it came down here and printed out the contents and closed the file. The contents of the file it just says corrupt file. And then it ran our finally clause. So that about does it for this video. Uh, hopefully it gave you a large overview of exception handling and gave you some ideas of how you can use this in your projects. Uh, if you do have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.